Now, fair Hemlina, our nuptial hour draws in a pace. Four happy days, bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. Four days will quickly steep themselves in a night, and four nights will quickly dream away the time. Hippolyta, I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revelry. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke! Goodbye. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news of thee? Full of vexation, come up, with complaining against my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath consented to marry him. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with her. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? Demetrius is a word of nature to me. So is Lysander. In himself, he is. But in this time, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held worthier. I would, my father look, but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. I entreat your grace to pardon me, for I know not by what power I am made bold. But I beseech you to tell me, but the worst that may come of me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death, but to abjure forever the society of men, to be in shady cloister made, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day, twixt my daughter and me, upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius, as he would or on Diana's altar to protest. Yield, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, release thy praise title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? I am my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranking, if not with vantage as Demetrius is. And which is more than all of these boasts can be? I am beloved of beauty's Hermia. So why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius made love to Helena and won her soul, and she, sweet lady dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes an idolatry of the an idolatry of spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius is to ask both thereof. Demetrius, come, and come, Demetrius, I have some private schooling for you both. As for you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up. With duty and desire we follow you. How oh, now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for one of rain, which I did well between, from the tempest of my eyes. I mean, for all that I could ever hear, by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, spite, to choose love by another's eyes. So quick, bright things come to confusion. Then let. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, for fancy's followers. Oh, good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. Remote from ha Athens, her house is seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, will I marry you. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. In, in, to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. So please meet with thee in that forest. My good Lysander, I pray to thee, by Cupid's strongest foe, his best heir with the golden head, in that place that thou hast appointed me, there truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God speak for Helena, whither away. Call you me fair? That fair again, I say. Demetrius loves you, fair. Oh, happy fair. Oh, teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frown would teach my smile such skill. <laughs> the more I hate him, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hates me. <laughs> this folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Don't worry, he no longer shall see your face. For Demetrius and I, for Lysander and I, will flee this place. 
Helen, to your minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold, through Athens gates, we have devised to steal. And in that wood, where often you and I want to lie, on faint primrose beds, emptying our bosoms of thy counsel sweet, there Lysander and I will meet. Goodbye, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us. And good luck, grant thee thy Demetrius, O will my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you and Demetrius, Demetrius dote on you. How happy some over others some can be. Through Athens I'm thought of as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is when Cupid painted blind. Nor hath less mind of any judgment taste. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down us, but he was only mine. And with this hail, some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of us did melt. I will go to tell him the fair Hermia's fly, then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in me I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again.